Hi, I'm Julie Thompson. Welcome to the Pembroke Select Board Candidate Interview. I want to take a moment to thank our candidate for participating in this interview and collaborating with PAC TV to bring this informational programming to residents and voters this election season. Let me explain the format. We will be conducting a one-on-one -on -one interview style Q&A format with each candidate lasting about 30 minutes. Responses will not be timed and follow-up questions may be asked during this format. We aim to ask up to about four questions, but that will depend on the length of responses along with any follow-up discussion during this exchange. Candidates will be allowed to address anything not covered or that they would like to add clarification to at the end of the interview in their closing remarks. Let's get started. Today we're speaking with Fraser Townley, one of the three candidates for two seats for the Pembroke Select Board in the Pembroke Town election. Fraser. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. All righty, let's get right into question number one. Okay. Okay. The, con the conditions of the roads in Pembroke are a constant source of discussion, debate, and of course, great financial implication. In 2021, the town hired a consultant to conduct an inventory and analysis of the road network, which was presented to the select board in January of 22. Most recently, the town of Pembroke roadway capital improvement plan was discussed at the April 5th Board of Selectmen meeting. What are your thoughts on past and future plans and outcomes for pavement management? Good question. So I can't be 100% certain about the past, but I do know what's happening today. Um, and that is that Bill Chenard has a very thorough plan for the roads. It's a, it's a well um, sketched out plan. It's actually not a sketch, but he's got that plan. It's available on the town hall website. Um, so you can review that plan and you can chime in on that plan. I also believe there is um, funds coming in to the, uh, to the town mm -hmm. to help support that plan. Um, so I think the issue that we have with the roads in Pembroke, first of all, we're in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. So there are always going to be issues with um, the roads. I'm not 100% certain how they're plowed, but I see a lot of plows going up and down the streets when there's no snow there. So I'm wondering if the way we remunerate the plow drivers is how many times they run up and down the road. Um, the plow drivers deserve an income. Um, if it doesn't snow, it's not their fault. They still have to be paid. They still have to earn a living. So maybe there's something we should be doing in looking at um, how we remunerate the, the plows because they're doing most of the damage as I understand it. The plows are doing the damage to the road. Well, there's, there's the weather but there's also the plows scraping nothing mm. is gonna damage the roads more. So often on social media, um, the big, one of the biggest complaints about Pembroke is the potholes. Mm -hmm. And, and, and um, once a street is repaved, it's beautiful and it lasts for a couple of years and then we live in New England. Mm -hmm. Is this something that the town just has to live with or is this something that if we had um, preventive maintenance on top of capital um, expenditures to, to really rip up the, the, the surface and redo it mm -hmm. um, on, a, on a continuous basis. Is, is that the answer and is that in what the grand plan is? So I've heard Bill talk about this quite a few times and he's very clear that if we get to the pothole before it gets worse, it's a lot cheaper. It's a lower cost repair. Um, so we have to be more vigilant. Mm. We have to pay attention to what's going on with the roads and we have to get the repair crews out there quicker and sooner. Um, as for the future, I don't know what's going to happen with, um, is there going to be a new technology? I believe there is new technologies out there that, that the team, the DPW are looking at mm -hmm. um, that will make this uh, easier. Um, but, you know, until we get to that point, um, we have to live with what we have. Mm. Thank you. Okay, question number two. The Recreation Commission is an important component of the town. Pembroke is in the process of hiring a new director of recreation. What components of this position do you feel should or could be expanded? And how do you think the new community center and all its potential programming will affect the range and responsibilities of this position? Um, so, I don't know too much about that particular position, mm -hmm. but I know the rec center is uh, an important development for the town. Um, I see it being as that hub. It's, it's been, there's been a building there for some time that's been used on and off by various clubs and mm -hmm. committees and what have you. Um, and it's important, I think, that the town has a central base mm -hmm. um, and, and that will help with the prosperity of the town and future people looking to come to the town 
and see that we actually have this community center that can serve the community. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the important thing with that building. So in a lot of towns, the director of recreation or, or the recreation commission, if you will, oversees not only um, activities that the kids might want to be involved in, but they also they liaise with the libraries, the senior centers, the, the booster clubs. Um, it's almost a more of a community position. Mm -hmm. Do you see that as something that would be beneficial to Pembroke? Well, I know right now we have the uh, Council of Aging. Mm -hmm. uh, Gretchen does a fantastic job there. Yep. Um, we have various other clubs and committees that are in the town. And they, they are working, I wouldn't say they work autonomously, mm -hmm. um, but they're, they're thriving and they're doing well. I've had the opportunity to visit most of these clubs over the last two or three weeks, um, putting my name out there. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been very impressed with not only how many different clubs and committees and, and groups there are, mm. but how well attended they are. Um, there's quite a large group that go to each of these different um, centers, um, including the churches and yep. their coffee and breakfast mornings, what, what have you. So I'm meeting a lot of people in town that, um, having lived here for 21 years, mm. I've obviously been a hermit somewhere <laughs> because there's quite a vibrant community. Um, do we need somebody to pull it all together? Mm. Um, I, I can't answer that question. Okay. Um, I think we probably do, mm. um, but they're doing very well um, without that liaison. Mm. And the, I think the new community center will be a natural way for a lot of things to come together uh, I, anyway. I think you're right. Mm. Okay, let's go on to question three. Water. Mm -hmm. Its source, its delivery methods, its purity, and its limited supply are all areas that have been and continue to be of great concern and great impact to our town. Water restrictions have become commonplace from May to September, and that trend is likely to continue. What plans or suggestions would you make for improving the existing water supply and the rules of usage? Mm -hmm. So I am aware of the town plans. I attend the, um, as a spectator, I attend the select board meetings and I'm aware of how we're looking to improve the water. I believe we're putting in a new well um, and we're looking at making sure the maintenance of the supplies and the pipes are all being taken care of. Um, look, again, we live in New England. Um, we have, we had 85 degree weather out today and it's the middle of April. There's gonna be a lot of evaporation this summer. Um, and people are gonna to want to water their lawns and mm. do their plants and, and live their best lives. Um, we have to make sure that we can make the, the supply of that water um, sufficient for everybody's needs. And I think there are plans in place to make sure that we can deliver um, all of the water. Um, it's well water, so you know, it should be of a high quality. Mm. So, um, no, I, I, I'm, I'm aware of the steps that are being taken. Um, we just have to make sure that if we expand the town, we keep expanding all of the utilities, water's one of them, mm. um, to make sure we can cope with that expansion. What about the, uh, the constant complaint about the color of water? Well, it's unfortunate when they flush, um, they have to flush certain um, lines in order to make sure that the, uh, the fire, uh, the fire uh, crews can get uh, quality supply. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's one of those you have to do it, mm. and um, there's always plenty of warning. The town go at, at, at pains to tell you the water's going to be flushed, you're going to get brown. Mm. I think they even provide um, bleaches and, and, and help for any laundry that gets dirtied in, in washing machines. So, um, yes, there is a perception, mm. but it is just that. It's a perception. Water, though, is something that you should depend on mm -hmm. as being clean and safe mm -hmm. and abundant. Mm -hmm. Is it safe? Do you think the water in Pembroke is safe? I believe so. Okay. I drink it. Okay. I bathe in it. Yeah. <laughs> now, what about the people that have spent money to um, put in wells mm -hmm. so that they can water their lawn, irrigation wells? Mm -hmm. Do you think that they should have to stop using those if our aquifer is, is too low? Um, I don't know. I don't think they should, because I, but I... Again, mm. um, that's a, a really interesting question because I don't know how low the aquifers are right now mm. and I don't know how lo low they're forecast to be with the amount of rain that we've been having. Um, uh, we, we, I, don't, I don't know the, the, the state of that, so I can't answer that question. Okay, and do you know about the uh, Silver Lake and Brockton using some of our water? 
Do you know the history of that? So I do, um, and I believe that's more surface water that they're taking. They're not taking our well water. Um, so look, we've got to work with our neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't see a problem with uh, sticking with ancient contracts that we have with our neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, you know, we have to make sure that it's fair and equitable. Mm. Um, and I, you know, we had a water ban but we were selling water to Brockton who weren't having a water ban. So, you know, we just have to keep an eye on these things. It's, it's management. Yeah, and you can understand why residents get of course. upset of course. on this of subject. Course. Okay, <clears throat> question four. Mm -hmm. The Pembroke Public Safety Building has been in the works for many, many years. Originally, replacing both the police and fire as separate projects was discussed. Now a combined public safety building with an additional fire substation is as close to fruition as a yes vote at town meeting for the appropriation and then a required two and a, uh, required proposition two and a half debt exclusion vote on the ballot on the May 13th town election. Mm -hmm. Are you voting yes or no on this project and why? So I am voting yes for it. I do think it's important. I've, I've actually visited um, both the fire department and the police department. Um, my opinion, and I actually asked Jason Verreras this question, if I had my house in this state, would you pass it? <laughs> he said no. Um, you know, we, we need to improve um, the, the, the safety buildings. Um, I also believe, I also understand that this has been in the works for some time. This current project's been around for about 18 months or been worked on for 18 months. Um, but previous planning boards have looked at um, doing all sorts of mm -hmm. combining of the two centers and the community center mm -hmm. um, on the site where the community center is. So we've always been looking at this and never actually going across the line. If we don't go across the line this time, who knows what the costs are going to be? And we're not just talking about the increase in costs. And Bill Chenard did a very good job at one of the, um, one of the meetings. I can't remember which one it was now, but he showed four graphs showing the price of electrics, the price of plumbing, the price of roofing, and the mm -hmm. price of standard building and it's all shooting up so the budget we have today is only going to go up mm. but there's another cost there's the cost of not having um, the right facilities for our first responders and if we don't have the right facilities for our first responders there could be a greater cost to pay that we're not we can't calculate today um, but it's I think it's a serious situation and we've got to move quickly okay and to those people that say, well, we just funded a community center last mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. and now you're back uh, to the taxpayers, and now you want another $61 million to fund this, um, which I don't think anyone, I have not heard one person say they don't agree that it needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I think it's the timing and the cost. Mm -hmm. So how do you convince the, the voters that now, because you're voting yes, now mm -hmm. is the time that they should be voting yes on this? Well, again, if you don't vote yes this time around, the next time it comes around, it's going to be higher. Mm -hmm. It's going to be higher. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is I understand that the, the cost per household of an average of 550000 mm -hmm. is going to be about $30 a month once you factor in the savings from, uh, I believe, some of the... the um, loans from the school roof that and will stuff come like that. They're going to come off. Yeah. So in a couple of years' time, we're going to be looking at $30 per, by the time the building's finished, actually, right. you'll be looking at $30 per month. Initially, I think it's more in the 55 to $58 range per month. Correct. Per household average, yeah. But the building's not going to be complete before the other loans come in, mm -hmm. is my understanding. Mm -hmm. But also going on in the, in the background is we've got, the, um, we've got developments occurring by the golf course, mm -hmm. about 170. And that's been going houses. on for right. years. But that's, yeah. that's, that's now going through. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to generate revenue for the town, and that's going to help ease this extra $30 per month for each household. And, and this is how we, how we grow the town. Um, and we're not talking about exponentially growing mm -hmm. it, but you have, to, you have to have the right facilities, the right community center, the right public safety buildings. You've got to have these buildings in place in order to attract and serve more members of the community. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's all self-fulfilling. And I assume to attract um, people that want to work in both the police department and the fire department. Mm -hmm. Because the facilities right now aren't. 
Well, as I understand it, there are various people that have um, not continued working mm. in Pembroke. Yes. I mean, I'll give you one example. They keep putting up a picture in the fire department of the washroom. Mm -hmm. What they don't explain is that one washing machine that's in the washroom can only wash one suit mm -hmm. per at a time. And it takes about an hour, and then it's about 10 hours of drying. Mm. There are 64 suits. There are 32 fire officers, fire um, personnel, personnel yep. and they each have two suits. Mm. So think about that. 64 hours of continuous use, it's not, it's not sufficient. It's not doing the job it's supposed to do. Okay, so you are absolutely a yes vote on, on doing this now. Yes. Okay. And um, finally, let's say, let's say a friend called you mm -hmm. and said they were considering the South Shore towns to move to, mm -hmm. and Pembroke was one that they were looking at. Mm -hmm. How would you describe the town for that friend, citing all the positives, plus all the areas that you think really need some improvement? So, um, first of all, I would say Pembroke is, it's, it's a gorgeous town. I have lived here for 21 years. Um, it's the longest I've ever lived anywhere in my life. Mm -hmm. You can tell from my accent, I'm not local, mm -hmm. um, but I've lived in three other countries. Yep. And this is the one I've stayed in the longest. And this town, the home I'm in, is the home I've stayed in the longest. That includes growing up. Mm -hmm. um, it's got beautiful um, fields and pathways. It's got a fantastic town center, which is improving. Um, it's reasonable in terms of the, the taxes that you pay in this town. It's extremely safe. Um, it, it, it's the kind of town that my parents, who are in their 80s, who still come and visit me, um, they're in tears every time they leave. This was the England they grew up in. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're charmed by it, I'm charmed by it, um, and I'm sure my friends would be charmed by it. And what are the things you'd say that the town really needs to work on? We need to work on, um, we need to work on being a little more friendly. What do you mean by that? I just think we need to be a little more friendly. There's, there's different sides of a coin, and there's been a rift in the town for a while, um, and we need to repair that rift. It's not necessary to be negative about the town. It's not necessary to be negative about the people in this town. Mm -hmm. um, there are diverse walks of life of people in this town, and they all deserve a vote. They all deserve a voice, mm -hmm. um, and they all deserve respect. Okay. And how would you help bring that rift, uh, bring, bring those sides together? How would you help foster a more friendly, as you put it, um, environment? So on my own journey on this campaign, I've reached out to absolutely everybody. I haven't chosen my friends, I haven't chosen my partners, and I haven't chosen my supporters. Mm -hmm. I've gone to everybody. Um, I've spoken at the RTC, I'm speaking at the DTC, I've given a speech at the Gun Club, mm -hmm. I gave a speech at the uh, Dolman Club. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm working my way through all of the different factions, and I'm not finding enemies, I'm finding friends. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a conservative for 40 years. Um, but I'm a conservative from the UK who believes in not profiteering from another man's downfall. Mm -hmm. And that means looking at how we fund um, public education and public health. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just something Europeans do. Mm -hmm. We're not all socialists. I am, <laughs> I am a, um, a conservative person, mm -hmm. um, fiscally as amongst other things. So... Um, I'm not finding I have many enemies. I'm sure there are people out there that don't agree with me, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not saying things that are um, outrageous mm. or offensive. Right. And it's not because I'm a soft either. Okay. I'm actually very firm. Okay. I know what we need to do, in my opinion. Um, I know how to make decisions. I've been running corporations, large and small, for 40 years. I know how to make decisions, and I know about corporate governance. Mm -hmm. So I know I know how to make the tough decisions. Okay. And compromise is a wonderful word. I'm not finding I need to compromise. Mm. I don't have to compromise val my values. I'm telling people who I am. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't mean that. I mean, sorry. Um, I mean compromise is when you said there's a rift, you know, there's, there's two sides. Often the two sides just need to find what is the common ground that we can agree on mm -hmm. and move from there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. 
Well, uh, thank you. We now have two minutes for closing remarks or to address anything that wasn't brought up that you'd like the viewers to hear. So why don't you, Fraser, go right to this camera here. So I'm not here to preach or lecture anybody about what they should or shouldn't believe and how they should or shouldn't lead their lives. I want to be elected to the select board and I want to support the town. I want to help build its safety and prosperity so that we can all go about leading our best lives. On May 13th, we'll be voting for various positions. Um, I'm running for select board. I'd appreciate your vote. But it's important that we all vote. It's important we all go to the polls. May 13th, it's a Saturday. Thank you. Thank you, Fraser, so much for participating in this interview. We wish you the best of luck throughout the campaign and in the election. For the viewers out there, thank you for joining us. If you're interested in watching replays of this interview, please visit our website, pactv.org, for replay times and online viewing options, including PacTV's on-demand and streaming services, PacTV Prime. And please make your choices heard by voting in the election on Saturday, May 13th. Thank you, and good day.